Hi there, and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Bradley Knapp with IBM, and today the topic that we're going to talk about is desktop virtualization. And this is a topic that's gotten a whole lot of press very recently uh, because of some recent announcements in the field. But I just want to give a very brief overview of what is this desktop virtualization thing and how could it potentially help you or your company. So if we think about desktop virtualization holistically, we've got to go back in time and really not that far in time or even to the present day where we have a person, right? That person, pretty much no matter what his job is, there's going to be some level of computing involved, right? So that guy is going to have his laptop and he's going to be typing away at the laptop. Maybe he's got a desktop. But computing is integrated into everything that we do. And so if you think about that from a business perspective, that means that businesses have to buy and issue and secure thousands or tens or thousands or hundreds of thousands of physical computing devices. And there's obviously some risk that comes along with that, right? If you've got a laptop, it can be stolen. Uh, if you've got a desktop, you know, they're anchored to the desk. They're not going to wander off on their own but you're leaving it unattended all the time. So you've got a risk if you haven't properly secured it. Someone can get in and get to that physical machine and do things they're not supposed to. That's on the information worker side, but let's also think about a factory floor, or let's think about a hospital, or let's think about a school where you've got to maintain all of these computing devices, some of which are in kind of rough environments, right? Kids are not the most gentle folks on the planet, and factory production floors aren't either. And so computers are, for better or for worse, somewhat delicate devices. So we've got to take care of them. And in addition to that, you've got the security headache of securing not just the physical machines, but also securing all of the user accounts for them, securing them against penetration, against theft, against loss. And so we have to think a little bit about is there a better way? Is there a way where we can centralize more so we don't have to buy as much hardware? Or if we do have to buy as much hardware, we can buy less expensive hardware. So can we centralize it? Can we lower our costs? And can we do it in a more secure manner? When somebody's got an individual laptop, they can install software on it, generally speaking. And there's always a possibility that that software can cause some sort of a security vulnerability. There have been lots of great published presentations as of late about software that gets installed onto a local machine that inadvertently causes much greater security problems. So how do we fix these problems? And one way, certainly not the only way, but one way is to do desktop virtualization where the desktop, rather than running on the local machine, running on that physical machine itself, we are going to run it remotely. We're going to run it in the cloud. And so instead of a physical high-powered laptop, let's imagine that we've got 10 architects in an architect firm. Architects need high-end machines, right? They do lots of processing, lots of CAD work. They need very powerful processors. They need lots of RAM. They need graphics acceleration. So to buy each one of them a very powerful laptop, which by the way is not terribly portable, we're going to have to spend a lot of money. Is there an alternative? There is desktop virtualization. So let us imagine a physical server, cloud server, sitting in a data center. We'll call that server. There we go. Now, this server is 20 or 30 or 50 times more powerful from a compute performance perspective than this laptop, but it can perform all of the same functions. You can put the same graphics accelerators in it. You can stuff them full of RAM so that it can get equivalent or better performance. But it's sitting in a data center. How useful is that? Well, the answer is you take this server and you divide it up into virtual machines that each machine is a virtual desktop. So you get a virtual desktop for each one of your individual users and you get to stack them on top of this server. So one piece of physical infrastructure can host four or 10 or 20 or 500 concurrent desktop sessions. Well, why is this good? Well, let's imagine a 24 hour workplace. Notice I said concurrent desktop sessions before. So if you've got users that are working 24 seven, 365, like it's say a hospital, rather than having to have a laptop for each one of them, they just get a session. 
Well, if you've got a thousand employees and they work about 500 during the day and about 500 at night, you only have to size your infrastructure to run for 500 people, plus a little bit of overhead. So you're going to save money because you're going to increase density. You're also going to be able to take all of these big, expensive enterprise benefits, but you only have to buy half as many, right? Because you are serving multiple users out of that same physical machine. Now, Let's go back to our hospital for, for a moment here. Hospital, you've got a nurse who's walking around. She's got a certain number of patients, four, six, eight patients, right? And maybe each room in that hospital has its own computer, right? So you've got a physical device there. It's not a powerful device because all it does is host these virtual sessions up here. Well, as that nurse goes from room to room to room, she doesn't want to lose whatever she's working on. She's got all of the stuff that she's already doing, plus what she's going to be doing in that next room. This is another place where virtual desktops are really cool, right? So let's call this, this box right here. This is going to be her session. This is her concurrent session. So she's in room one and she logs in on that machine to her user session. And so she's got her email running, she's got the, the patient records open, she's got lab records open, maybe some x-rays, something like that. And so that is all running in this session that is unique to her. Now, she gets done in that room and it's time for her to physically go over to room number two. Now, all she has to do is disconnect this session right here, so we'll put an X on it, and reconnect from the computer in room number two. But the session is stateful, it's still live. And so nothing has changed on the screen that is displayed to her, even though she's now on a different physical device. She's logged in on a whole new machine now. And she can do that as she goes to room three and four and so on and so forth, because the session is running on the server. It's running in the cloud. She doesn't ever have to log off and log back on again and rebuild the machine. Like if you were going in an old school environment where you logged off a machine and then you would have to reload it off the domain. Because it, the actual desktop itself, all of the applications on the desktop are residing on that server, all she's doing is accessing her session. So not only do you get the increased density, which is a great thing, lowers cost, you also get this concurrency of session, which is great for your employees because they aren't constantly logging out and logging in and logging out and logging in and moving from place to place to place. Another place that virtual desktops are great. Let's imagine something like a call center environment where you don't have assigned seating, right? The employees come in, they sit down wherever they need to be, they log in and they start work. Well, because these sessions reside on the server, whenever you bring them up, they can be brought up onto any client, right? And so the ability to bring up any client is important, or bring up on any clients is very important because now you don't have to worry about the problems of assigned sitting. And this person can only sit in this cube because it's the only one that is authorized to bring up their session. So again, the increased flexibility that you get is just fantastic. Now, there's one other really neat part about virtual desktops that's very specific to security that I do want to touch on. So let us imagine for a moment a scenario where you've got security information, right? Information that needs to be heavily protected against loss. And so we've got our guy over here. He's got his laptop. He's working at home, but he needs to get into this security information. And for various internal reasons, he is not allowed to access that information and store it on his local machine. What he can do is he can create a session out of his local machine into our server, and he can open a virtual desktop on his physical desktop. It runs in a window just like any other window. So he can create a session that is going to display to him that secured information, but it's going to display it in a secured way, right? Because he's not caching it locally on his machine. It can't be stolen off of it. All he's seeing is an image of what he's looking at, and that image is delivered via the secure server. So again, helping to ensure security, helping to ensure access control, making sure that only the right people are getting to the documents that they need to get to. So that's a really brief overview of virtual desktops. Hopefully it was useful. And if you have any questions, just let us know.